Hey, my name is Marco. I'm a former pro opera singer turned voice actor, and today we're going to be watching the Footfalls Final Fantasy XIV trailer. This is a rule for Final Fantasy XIV that it has to include audio, has to include visual, so this deviates from my normal standard protocol of not including video um, when we listen to music, and I have my reasons for that, but rules are rules, and so we're going to be watching this instead of listening to it. But I will be stopping and starting to reflect and talk about the music throughout this entire five minutes, so let's do it. I love this. I've already heard it. What I love about this is when we start, it's all very sotto voce. It's a heart of embers, heart of love. It's all very uh, up close to the mic. It's very quiet. It's very intimate. I believe it's due to the reflection of what's come before. I mean, we ended Shadowbringers in such a big way. And the entire journey of Shadowbringers to bring us to Endwalker has been quite enormous in so many ways. And so I feel that this piano doom boom 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 this is all there to assist the listener and the viewer in this case to think back on what's come before and it's a very reflective moment Listen to the build up too. Now obviously I see what's happening on the screen, but you have this bum 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 bum. I think it's interesting because as we as we build, usually what happens is as we continue to grow in a piece of music, there is a climax and then we dip and we have that resolution where we finally spill over the top and we resolve into, you know, a melody or or a feeling of of release. And it's interesting how we're in this building up phase. And of course, now we're seeing conflict on the screen. But if you were to take away the music, take away this, what's happening on the screen, you have this build up that's really, really powerful. <laughs> So listen, you've got a few things there. You've got an extension of this prolonged sense of like release, you know? You got that with the electric guitar. And then on the flip side, you also then enter into the singing. And I find the singing kind of interesting because the singing is sort of muffled by this sort of sound effect over top. And I think again, we're still in this in this world of trying to understand what's come before as we shift into moving forward. And so there's this, this is all this continued delay as we now enter into these light motifs from the past expansions. As the chaos spread, the star seemed doomed to unravel, and yet... There were those who stood in defiance of that fate. The hour has come, Free Tribe. It's 
So obviously we we are throwing ourselves back into and back into heaven's word when we see Astinian and the dragon and we we you know so that callback that light motif in in reference of you know there's such an emotional impact when we hear something after having experienced it in this case probably for hundreds of hours this happens in opera all the time where we have a light motif near the end of an opera that makes us reflect on the beginning of the opera. A prime example of this is La Boheme by Puccini. We we feel so much grief and sadness at the end of Act 4 of La Boheme, knowing that we've also heard the love themes in the orchestra, not by the singers, uh, from Act 1 when we first discover Rodolfo and Mimi falling in love. And so there's this back and forth and this ebb and flow with these light motifs that really allows us to have a deep and profound emotional connection to this music. So in Stormblood here, obviously, that's one of the moments that we first discover these characters, Xenos and everything. And so we, again, there's that leitmotif highlighting the two of them. Uh, and again, we're using leitmotif. I mean, I've got like goosebumps just like talking about this, but we're highlighting them. And essentially, because they are pivotal characters within the con within the confines of Stormblood. And again, light motifs are used here to again make us feel a hearkening back and a reflecting on what's come before. And I still feel like all of this is actually still part of this uh, exposition prior to this climax and release that we will hear once we get to the new Endwalker music. And so, even now with this Endwalker, with this uh, Shadowbringer section, we're highlighting Thancred. We're highlighting. We're highlighting our other characters that are all pivotally important to the plot. And, and again, we're, this is all storytelling through music, obviously with a visual aid. And yes, we have that in opera as well. But again, it's the incredible power of music to allow us to feel emotions that I think would this would be less effective if we didn't have the music to sort of guide our thoughts and feelings. Took your time. Tis as we feared. The respite afforded this land was but fleeting. The end draweth nigh. You hear this? This is the, the um, these goosebumps. This entire video. You hear this, this, bum, 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 bum. Now, now it's time. Now we're entering into that climax point. We're entering into the shift. You hear that? Turn of echoes. That's the Shadowbringers intro music. And uh, just really quickly to talk about uh, this, this singing, you know, that sharp. Higher, oh, higher. I mean, this is all, it's all there to, first of all, literally, as she sings higher, she's getting higher, which is really interesting, number one. And number two, uh, wings of hope. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm that's that's strength that's fortitude that's courage that's on wings of hope that is that is that is 
you hear that in that rhythm. It's very sharp. And uh, yeah, so let's keep going. So now we've got a recapitulation where we are tying all of this together and bringing in what we heard at the very beginning, which we haven't heard in about three, four minutes. Now we're bringing it back and we're sending it home. So, Charlian would keep its counsel while the world is lost to ruin. It would. Come what may, we shall live on. We must. Do as you must, then. But we scions will fight. Until the heavens fall. Until our last breath. And so, and so there you have it. That whole thing is such a journey and it really gives us this incredible sense of excitement and curiosity, first of all, not only for what's to come, but then also this beautiful sense of reflection for what's come before. Obviously, this is the culmination of the entire story. And so we have to tie all these things together. This is such a common trope in music to, again, take what we've, what we've heard, add different layers to it, add variations of it and then return us essentially to to what's coming next and what's coming what's new and it's so beautiful and it really just is such an emotional smart manipulative thing to do as a composer in the best sense of the word to tug at our heartstrings and make us really reflect and it's amazing i mean this this music is astounding and i'm so grateful that I'm playing it. I'm about a quarter of the way through, and I'm really excited to finish this out. I'm hoping to really hit the pavement in the next few weeks and really get it done. Um, and yes, I will uh, <laughs> just bury myself into Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, as always, thank you so much. This was a fantastic Patreon request. And uh, like I mentioned before, you know, video for Final Fantasy XIV moving forward is a necessity, and it will continue to be that way. Um, I'm really looking forward to listening and watching to more of this with you. And as always, if you want to support the channel, feel free to check out the links in the About section. And thank you so much. Feel free to join the Discord too, and I'll talk to you later. Bye. See ya.